Mark Coleman had a heart attack and tried to sleep it off. He didn't know what was going on. He thought his chest was hurting, so he lays down. He tries to sleep it off. He finally gets up and drives himself to the hospital. And my entire point of making this video is to attempt to entertain Mark Coleman while he's in the hospital. Tell him hello. Let him know I'm thinking about him. I speak for all of us as a community. We're all thinking about him. So glad that he's okay and hope he works through this thing. Now, I want to tell you guys a couple of Mark Coleman stories. So Mark is older than me, and I'm trying to think by how much. I think 10 years would be a good guess. But I know when I was an aspiring young middle school wrestler, Mark was an Olympian. Mark was on the 1992 Olympic team. A lot of people don't know that. Mark Coleman has a world silver medal. Mark Coleman was an NCAA champion. I think most of you know that he was an NCAA champion. But the Olympian part was one of those things that just never really got told in the Mark Coleman story. And the fact that he was a world finalist with a silver medal also never got told because he became the UFC champion. That's how all of you guys knew him. So a lot of times you feel as though you're insulting or demoting a guy who is the world champion by saying, oh, and by the way, at one point he was second in the world. You, you feel like that's an insult. I'm just here to share with you as an amateur wrestler, tremendous honor. Something Mark's very proud of, should be very proud of, dedicated, sacrificed, and worked hard for. So Mark had come out to Eugene, which is a city in Oregon. I ended up going to college there, but it was two and a half hours away from where I lived. And he put on a clinic. USA Wrestling was in town. I think there was a dual meet against the Russians, but then they came out and they, they did a clinic, and Mark Coleman was part of that. And it's the first time I ever saw him. And, I mean, this guy was smooth. Mark Coleman was smooth. He was showing some kind of a throw from an over-under position, step around the leg, arch your hips, throw the guy. And he would throw this opponent, and he would put him down like a feather. I've never seen anything like it to this day. I've never seen anybody have such control. And then when you understand, Mark was doing this at a weight class called 220. And 220 no longer exists. But to put 220, that weight class, in perspective for you, that's the weight class where Kurt Angle became the world and Olympic champion. As a matter of fact, Kurt Angle and Mark Coleman battled it out a number of times. Same weight class. Coleman was the 92 Olympian, tried to become 96 Olympian, but lost at the trials. Angle won it. Angle won the gold medal. So, I mean, right? That probably interests you. Mark Coleman wrestled Kurt Angle. Yeah, a bunch of times he did. But Mark Coleman ends up in the UFC, and I'm watching it, man. And I'm cheering for the wrestlers. And there, there was a time, and it was just before Coleman, when we had no idea as wrestlers that we were tough guys. We knew it was a really hard sport, but we didn't, we didn't know that. You don't walk around the hallway or walk around. Nobody showed you that respect, and you didn't even know it yourself. Tell this got tested in the UFC, and it was Dan Severn who brought it to everyone's attention and made wrestlers go, oh, wow, we, we have a skill that you know, might work. Maybe this is something we could do someday. Nobody even knew that until Dan Severn came along. Well, Coleman was right behind Severn. Coleman's the one that came right in behind Dan, set the world on fire. So then eventually I end up, right? I'm just a little kid with a dream. I grow up. And I ended up on a card with Mark Coleman, and Mark was the main event. He was taking on Randy Couture. And as much as I was a fan of Coleman, I had never met Coleman, and I'm Randy's teammate. So I'm pro Randy, but the truth, I really like Mark Coleman. I'm into, I've looked up to this guy, but he doesn't know any of these things. He probably thought I was a jerk. I was a co-main event on that night. And so I go to the press conference. We're all there. I call Mark Coleman a bum. So this guy's a bum. Randy's going to get rid of this guy. Now, you will hear guys called bums all the time. This was in 2009. Nobody in MMA had ever called anybody a bum, ever. I mean, this was like the most profane thing that had ever been spoken at an MMA press conference. Nobody knew how to handle it. Mark didn't know how to handle it. Dana was in the middle, didn't know what to say. Nobody, like this, this was trash talk to the highest of level. A three-letter word, bum. Very common in the boxing world. Nobody had ever used it in MMA. Where it's all about, oh, my. Oh, my respect and my honor, because that, that's what Bruce Lee told me in the movies. But that's still where MMA was until I came along. At any rate, so when the whole thing's done, Coleman comes up to me. And it, a while later, I mean, the whole thing's done. We pack up, we go on. He's at a show, I'm at a show. He comes right up to me. He says, hey, you know what? You called me a bum. Now, I've never talked to this guy, and he's a monster. And he doesn't know, he doesn't know he's bigger than life. To me, he doesn't know that I was looking up to him and paying to come to clinics that he's throwing guys around back when I was, you know, in junior high. So uh, it's one of those things. Like, well, 
said something, Chael, looks like you're going to have to answer for it. So anyway, he walks up to me. He goes, so you said I was a bum. And he takes a drink of his beer and he goes, I thought about it. I am a bum. You know, I drink a lot of beer. I think I am a bum. <laughs> I just ended up having this great moment with Mark Coleman. And now I'm talking him out of it. No, oh, no, Mark, you're not a bum, man. Oh, no, I'm teammates with Randy. You know, I was, I was just trying to back up Randy. He's like, no, no, I've, I've been thinking about it. He takes another drink of his beer. He starts insisting to me. No, I'm a bum. I'm a bum. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought this to my attention. <laughs> it's like, so Coleman turns out to, have, to be this great guy. Like have this really good sense of humor. Be lighthearted, not take himself too serious, right? So this is how I got to know him, though. And so it was kind of cool. You know, we ripped the bandaid off. We start right away. So I end up in Brazil doing the Ultimate Fighter, and it's with Vandalay. And if you guys will remember that time, if you don't, but they hated me in Brazil. I had armed security. I had to ride around in a bulletproof car. They hated me. Vandalay hated me. So I end up in a fight with Vandalay. Now, I'm, I'm outnumbered however many to one. Right? Unless my coach Clayton's going to get, and I don't want Coach Clayton involved. Clayton had just retired. Clayton had just retired. He doesn't need to be involved in it because I talk some trash about a country. So that's why I'm excluding Clayton and Jamie and Vinny and, and, and Coach Scott. I'm excluding those guys because I don't want them involved. If somebody's got to take it on the chin, it's got to be me. I end up in this fight with Vandalay, and Vandalay's buddies jump in. So I end up getting jumped. I don't know what to do. And my security guard didn't know what to do. He pulled Vandalay aside, man to man. He goes, Vandalay, I'm not a trained fighter. And he pulls his jacket back and he shows him his gun. This is what I have. I'm here to protect him. If you do that again, I have one way to protect. And I had to go talk to the security guard. No, under no circumstance do we shoot Vandalay. He's like, well, that, that's what I do. That's how I, no, no. No matter what happens to me, we don't shoot Vandalay. So things got really weird. I called Mark Coleman. I'm in Brazil. I called Mark. I said, man, I, I, I got to have some muscle out here. And Coleman said, I'll be on a plane tonight. And I bring that to you because, you know, I start off contentious with Coleman. I insult him at a press conference. He comes up to me and makes a joke. And now next thing I know, my back's against a wall. I call Mark Coleman. And he says, yes. I can't remember what ended up happening. It ended up being something in, with production. Somehow we couldn't get Coleman there or we didn't get, what, whatever happened, he ended up not coming. But I asked him to come. I, he knew why. Wasn't going to be like the world's most fun job. And he said yes. And it's the thought that counts. And I've always owed you. I've always owed you, Hammer. Probably never going to pay you back. But I owe you.